Hey guys, welcome to the One Percenter Podcast. Andy Elliott, Jacqueline Elliott, Jacqueline Elliott, Jacqueline, the cartel leader Elliott. That's right. And we got the man, the myth, the legend, Russell Brunson, right here. Okay, guys. So number one, is it really Russell Brunson? It's me. I'm real. Yeah, oh, yeah. it's really <laughs> Russell Brunson. And guys, listen. So number one, the last uh, four or five years um, since I started my entrepreneur journey, uh, his course, the Broker Blueprint, in 2019, with him, Dean, and Tony Robbins. First course I ever bought, spent three grand, and here we are, a few years later, nine-figure business. I want, I, want, I want everybody to know this, all right? Uh, Self-development changed my life. It is the secret, right? It's not about what you uh, try to achieve. It's about who you become that determines what you achieve. And I think there's a lot of people that want to win that are watching this. I promise you today I'll bring more value. Russell will bring more value, and Jacqueline will bring more value to you than we brought on any YouTube video since I've ever posted. I'm gonna tell you why. Go. I'm gonna tell you why. Number one, because I had a talk with Russell this morning. He flew out from Boise, Idaho, which is where he, le he lives, left his wife, left his kids to come out here. Um, we, he's met our team. We worked out this morning. He's been out to dinner at our house last night. He got night. quite uh, the grief. He wrestled my team up. today, right? We wrestled. <laughs> Literally wrestled, like they're all in their singlets out there <laughs> on yeah. the asphalt. On yeah, the you'll, you'll see. <laughs> we'll, we had a killer day. Um, but the coolest thing is, is that I want to go to a conversation I had with him in the gym, right? And um, we were talking about self-development. Mm -hmm. He's like, hey, man, I want to create uh, a self-development museum mm -hmm. for, uh, pr pr I don't know if you call it like prime leaders. Prime movers. Prime yeah. movers. Yeah, prime movers. People that are going to move this next generation, that are going to really, truly lead people. And the only way you can do that is to lead yourself. The first law in leadership is self-leadership. And then you can lead others, right? Yeah. And so I want to talk about self-development. How does anyone right now, right, um, go if they're not who they want to become, if they don't have the results that they want, if they don't have the lifestyle that they want to live, but they know they're capable of more, where, where, where do you begin? Yeah. And where did you I, start? Yeah, and I began um, with my wife. She said, hey, buy the course. And I was scared. It was $3,000. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I had no idea what said on the other side. Matter of fact, I'll even say another thing. And because I want to make sure I get this out there to relate with anyone on my 29th day, I'd watched the course 10 times. Mm -hmm. I'd learned a lot. <laughs> I was a new person. I asked Jacqueline if I could get my money back uh -huh. because that's how limited my thing was. Get a 30 was. day money back yeah, guarantee on days. the 29th day. Is like ready to cancel? All well, that's crazy. No, but I want to tell you why. Cause this is important because a lot of people, they see like, Oh, these guys got these big businesses they're killers. They're doing badass stuff. And they don't understand that we were all once not that person. Right. Right. Like, like I just need everybody to know that who you become determines the information, the experiences of the people that you're with and, and the inform and, and the information really and the people. Right. And I learned from you guys all this stuff, but, but I had this scarcity mindset yeah. that there wasn't like, maybe I needed this back. Like I, and by the way, if you don't give, you're never going to get. Yeah. I think the secret to life is giving. If you right now don't feel fulfilled, go give something to somebody. You'll feel amazing. I was going to take back what you guys had given me. My to wife, she said back. something really good. This is why you got to have a good running mate. You got to have a good partner. That we're all together. We're family. We're brothers. We're going to grow. She said, is that what you want? Is that how you want your customers your to treat customers. you, your future customers when you build your business? So She's like, if you're not willing to invest in yourself, then no one's willing to invest in you. And if you're going to invest when these people, and then when they, when they give their word and do a good job, you're going to go take back the money. She goes, that's the karma. It's a reality that you're going to have for the rest of your life. So you don't attract who you want. You attract who you are. So if you are the person who refunds, you're the person who cancels. Like that's exactly the client you attract. It's crazy. Dude, exactly. She yeah. made me break that weakness. Mm -hmm. And I, I obviously didn't cancel it because I do whatever she says, you know, <laughs> <laughs> best decision of my life. Mm -hmm. That was a pivotal day that could have ruined my whole life. And because I stuck through it and I had the abundance mindset and I knew it was going to pay off, self-development changed my life. So <clears throat> what I want to talk to you about today, obviously, uh, you built ClickFunnels. Everybody in the world knows ClickFunnels. If you don't mm -hmm. know who Russell Brunson is right now, um, it's just a Russell Brunson on Instagram, right? Yep. I mean, he's got a million plus followers, but he's built a massive company. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's taken over the world. It's called ClickFunnels. If anybody's going to start their own business, you're going to sell a product in any way, shape, or form, you're going to use his product, ClickFunnels, because it is the best. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor, I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918 210 0254. 918 
210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. Um, but I want to talk about like your self-development journey because you know you're a wrestler. You wrestled. I heard you downstairs talking about the day that you had your hand raised in a match, <laughs> the way that it felt to yeah. win. Everybody hates losing. And there's a lot of people right now that are winning and kicking ass. And there's a lot of people right now that want to win and kick ass and they don't know what to do. So I want to talk about our self-development journey, right? Maybe talk a little bit about mine. Jacqueline can talk a little about hers. But I want to talk about yours because yeah, we'll you, you really tr intrigued me with being like, you said I'm a collector of books. Like I try to get my hands on everything. You start And you start talking about like Earl Nightingale and a lot of these guys back from the old days and getting their manuscripts when they wrote their books. And I'm like, dude, whoa. <laughs> no, but I was like, dude, like you're a real student of yeah. the game yeah like you're a real student and so talk to everybody talk to me and my wife talk to you know our audience about like about your journey and self-development and ways that you've been able to educate yourself to build such a great life yeah i think for me it started initially in growing up in sports because that's like the first time i'd done something prior to me being a wrestler i was just a kid who'd go to school come home watch tv you know that was all i would do and then my dad got me involved in wrestling and it was the first time that like I had something, something to to, to do and to be excited by, mm -hmm. and I I remember um, the very first time uh, I was in I was in ninth grade and I made the JV team, and I remember uh, going to weigh-ins and <clears throat> I get in the weigh-ins and uh, I jump on the scale I make my weight and the next kid gets on the scale I'm just, the kid I'm gonna be wrestling and the guy comes out and he's got a mustache and I still to this day <laughs> cannot grow a mustache like I have no facial hair <laughs> and I remember sitting there I'm a ninth grade kid I'm like. This is a grown man with a mustache. He's going to destroy me. And he weighs in. And I remember getting there and going up, you know, uh, my wrestling room was in the basement of our high school. And then the mats were up in the in the gym. So we go up to the match and we go out there, we shake hands, we start wrestling. And I'm going out there and we're flirting this huge thing. And I don't, I don't remember what happened. I just remember I got done. We stand up. And I don't know if I won or if I lost. And the ref raised my hand. And I looked up and, you know, it was JV. So it was like three people in the stands. My dad was one of them. He's jumping around. And I was like, this is the greatest feeling I've ever felt in my life. Like, I want this as often as possible. And then I became obsessed. And so that was the first time I ever had something that was like, all right, this is, there was like Russell before that moment and Russell after. Like, that was the transition point. And I just became obsessed. And so, and back, I didn't know back then about personal growth. or I didn't know like you could go study or read things, but I had really good coaches around me who, who instilled a lot of those elements. Mm. And then um, later when I got into, into business, the first thing that I, I leveraged like, my wrestling career, like what I learned, re the skill sets of wrestling in into business, and those things started helping. And then, um, and then, what, what were some of those things? Just a couple. I think the biggest one for me is, uh, and it's, I, I coach a lot of entrepreneurs right now. And the biggest thing I see with entrepreneurs is like, um, especially those who never competed in anything in their life, like they have so much fear that that if they fail, they're going to become a failure mm -hmm. that they don't try. So they sit yeah. in this this like learning loop, or they're learning and they're reading books and watching podcasts. But they don't do the thing because they're mm -hmm. so scared. And for me, it was like. In wrestling, like I lost all the time. Like we'd watch you know, my junior year. I remember the very first match of the season. I was like telling everybody, "I'm gonna be a state champ. It's gonna be amazing." First match of the season, I go out there against the kid who was a returning state finalist. Mm -hmm. He beats me in front of everybody. I remember going to school the next day. I was like, "I thought you were gonna be a state champ. You lost to this kid." And I was just like, it was really hard for me. But my dad, luckily, my dad, um, he filmed the match and he started like watching like what I did and where I was out of position, what the other kid was doing. And so every single morning, I wake up, my dad would get me. On the carpet, you know, I didn't want to be there. I was like, okay, we're going to drill the move. We drill this move and drill the move. And then after practice, we get done with practice. I see my dad coming in the wrestling room. I'm like, oh, man. And we drill it again and <clears throat> drill that for four months. And four months later, I ended up meeting that kid in the state finals, and I ended up beating him. And I, and I learned, it was like, okay, if I fail, I'm not a failure. Failure is like the most data-rich source we have. It's like right. it shows us everything, and then we can go out there and we can do things. So for me, when I started creating businesses, I'd create something, put it out there, and I – I didn't know if it was going to work or not, but I put it out as quick as I could, and then I would just watch and see what happened. Mm -hmm. And then I'd see the failures come back and say, oh, let's tweak that, let's change that. And so, like, that's one of the hardest things, though, to instill in people that have yeah. never done that. Um, they're so afraid of, like, losing their dream, they just they just dream out and don't ever do anything. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that was, like, one of the biggest aspects I brought into into entrepreneurship and business for me was, was really it's understanding huge. that. You know, yeah, that'll save a lot of people's lives. Yeah. Or make a lot of people make a move when they've been overthinking it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like worst case. Yeah. And things, especially online, like you put out something and it fails. Like no one really knows. Mm -hmm. I've had people like, oh, I saw that offer. That was amazing. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. And they're like, all right. They tell me like, I bought that offer. I'm like, oh, you're one of like three people. I didn't tell them that, but yeah. they have no idea. Like it didn't work. Like it, it completely bombed. But no one else yeah. knows other than you. Yeah. yeah. It's just you're like it's just testing things all the judge. time. Yeah. You judge yourself more than anybody. Yeah. yeah. For mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. It's interesting. So. Yeah. I think sport sports taught you 
to lose, mm -hmm. you know, and then even like Jackie, she comes from a failed entrepreneur family, mm -hmm. right? So like her dad failing a lot in front of her face, mm -hmm. you know, like made her just be a risk taker. Yeah, yeah, yeah I wasn't right? afraid of failure because yeah. I could just fail and then, then nothing happens. Like you just start over. Yeah, I, I came from a dad party. that, that yeah. worked at the same job for 30 years. So my goal was to like get a job and don't ever lose it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Her job was like, dude, if this don't work, we're just start another <laughs> we'll one. Again, yes, again. exactly. So we're you completely see what I mean? the opposite. Interesting. Yeah. So we have to break. Well, some people right now they need to break the way they were programmed. The yeah. generational curses. Yeah. Do you think that you would have been where you are today without your dad like really pushing you to recognize failure and getting better through it? Or oh, I don't think so. No. That was a big because like my the instinct for all of us humans is not to go and like and to look at things and, mm -hmm. you know, look at your failures and figure things out. He was the one that was just always kept doing that. And, like, again, my junior year, that's what happened. And I remember when I beat the kid in the finals, I was, like, such a, like, I remember driving home, I was like, this is crazy. I can do anything I want. I just got to try something. I'm going to fail. If I know where I fail, and then just fix it and then do it again and do it again. And and um, and that that was the that was the key for me, though. It was interesting. So, so getting out of sports, you go through college, wrestle. Yeah. Getting out, starting your own business is young. Like, how did you, like, tell us, talk to us how you studied and learned and... Yeah. What made like, you, like, attracted to that <laughs> business? Like, did you, did somebody else teach you that or how, how did you come across So what happened, I told you guys, my wife's uh, five years old, five and a half years older than me, and so okay. we got married. She was working, supporting me. I was still wrestling. And I always had this, like, I want to be the man, I want to support her, but she was supporting me, which I'm grateful for. But, um, but I was going to school full-time, I was wrestling full-time, so I had to figure out some way to make money. So I did what most people do, which... Went to Google and like, how to make money, you know, start searching. And there's tons of, anyway, for like a year, I was just trying all sorts of things that didn't work. And then eventually, um, uh, I found some people who, who were doing really cool things. They were, they were making these little these little niche products and they were selling them. And so uh, at the time, my buddy and I, it was spring break. I remember we'd spent the entire spring break making potato guns. And I was just like, uh, our wives were both working, supporting us. And we were just like, let's make potato guns while they're at work. So we made all these potato guns. We were like searching the plans online and figure things out. And so... Um, and that was like just a fun week we did that went out and shot him that weekend and then I remember afterwards uh, I was back in school the next Monday and I was like I wonder if anyone else besides us were searching for how to make a potato gun like that was and so uh, I went online and there's there's some sites you can use back then it was called uh, Overture but you type in a keyword and it would show you how many people per month were searching for it so I just typed in potato gun and there's like 18,000 people a month searching for potato gun like 12,000 for potato gun plans and all these different things and I was like and there was nobody selling anything. You got addicted to the data. Yeah. And I was like, no one's selling. It's like, this could be, maybe that's my thing. Yeah. So I called my buddy back up and I was like, hey man, um, we're going to make a DVD, teach people how to make potato guns. And he was like, like he thought it was so weird. <laughs> I was guns. like, please, like, it'll be awesome. He's like, all right, I don't care. I have nothing else to do. So we borrowed a video camera from somebody. And um, first thing we did, we drove up to Home Depot and uh, he pulled out video camera recorded. So I was like, okay. Like next to all the sprinkler pipes, like these are the sprinkler pipes. This is the psi you need. So all the stuff we learned the weekend before when we we're making them, like we just regurgitated it and they took that. So we showed up how to buy the pipes and the barbecue igniters and just all the things you need to make a potato gun. And then we drove to uh, Colette. My wife's um, works. She worked at this like motor shop. So we went in the back of the motor shop and then we filmed us like cutting the pipes and gluing them together and all that kind of stuff. And then um, we snuck into the university because they had uh, uh, into one of the, the classrooms with a big whiteboard. So we snuck in there. And then my buddy filmed me, and we were trying to act like we were so smart. Right? We had all the formulas, like the barrel to chamber volume ratio, is the, and write it out on the board. Like, just film us making this, teaching people like potato gun. And so that was the first product. When we took that, I made a DVD, we burned it, and I put up a website, and we started selling it. And that was the first thing people started buying it. I was like, this is the greatest thing in the world. Someone bought something I created, and they mm -hmm. paid me like 20 or 30 bucks for this DVD. We'd ship it out to them. And that's kind of how, how the whole thing that's crazy. started for that's me. That's funny. We started the same <laughs> way with the with DVDs. DVD. Oh, did I you? had a DVD burner. Yeah. Yeah. Sure you did you ever have like the one on top and the 10 underneath yes. thing for the first one? We record? probably had the same one. And they can't burn them after you make them. Like, yeah. they, they, they can't they copy couldn't, them. They couldn't yeah. copy like, them. It's so cool. That's awesome. I was like, I they're not going to pirate my DVD. My potato gun DVD. You can tell we're all around the same age. It's awesome. We're all 44, 44. Yeah. 42, 42. But, yeah. I would burn the DVDs. That's awesome. I did the stickers and you put the stickers and oh, put them yeah. on top of it. Oh, yeah. You would buy them. And Jackie was so good at all yeah, that. Yeah, it was so cool. And then I got the one that can etch, actually, the DVD. Oh, really? I was, I was really high tech. I never had it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's jealous. awesome. I love it. You're jealous yeah. to this day. <laughs> this day. But that's how I started. And then I shared the story with you guys this morning, but then I remember like I was trying to figure out how to, make, how to sell these things online. And so I went to this seminar and I remember there was a speaker who got up and he was like, I don't remember what he was talking about, but he was like, I tested 
a red headline versus a blue headline and increase my conversions by whatever percent. And I was like, mm-hmm. huh. And it was the first time, because prior to that, I didn't like studying or learning or reading or any, like I wanted to make money, but the rest of it I wasn't into. And I remember he said that. So I went back to my to my website and I like, changed the headline or whatever. And sure enough, like, I had like a 50% increase in sales. And I was like, I just gave myself a 50% raise yeah. from one little idea. And then it, like the light bulb went off. I was like, I wonder if there's any other idea. So I went to another seminar and I sat there for three days. I remember like day two and a half, someone said something. I was like, that's the thing. I went back, I applied it, and then I made more money. I was like, this is crazy. Mm-hmm. I learned something, I apply it, I make money. And then I was like, I wonder if there's anything good in books. So I found a book, I read it, and like 100 pages, and I'm like, there's an idea. I took it, applied it, made more money. I was like, this is insane. And so I became obsessed with that, just like scouring that. info anywhere, just looking for the nugget that I could apply to what I had and see if I can give myself a raise. And so I had this mantra, I was like, how do I give myself a raise every day? Mm. Every day, we go, how do I give myself a raise today? How do I give myself so a raise good, today? Dude. So I'm scouring, scouring, find I'm a thing, that. make the tweet. How do I give myself a raise? TM, Arbr- Russell Brunson. Just one <laughs> yeah, thing, <laughs> just one thing you can pick from everybody. Yeah. I, I love that you said that. One thing that I can learn yeah. from every single person I encounter that I can apply, yeah. well, I mean, that, that right there will make you rich. We have a lot of people that go to seminars and go to places. If they just did that one yeah. thing, got one thing from every event that they went to, mm. should they, they'd all yeah. be rich. But, but I love that he said it, because when you word it, how can I give myself a raise every day? Exactly. It and makes that, every day for you to be aware of the it's true. of the place. Where can you find it? Yeah. And you also mentioned another thing that you did. You multiplied it into like money. If I had a job, how many hours would I have done? Yeah. You know, and that was really cool that you did that as well. Like oh, you picked yeah. that one thing. You said if I translated it to a normal job, it would take me these this amount of hours, and I just changed the color on this website, and they just gave me that much. Yeah. That was yeah. Cool. Any other profession, someone have to go back to school for five years to right. get double their, you know, whatever. Exactly. Or, or, or exactly. wait in line for a rank. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, to move up. Yeah. That's how you get yeah, Entrepreneurship, you can just learn. Yeah. Instant upgrade, instant upgrade, just keep Seriously? going. Yeah. And people don't like that because they, they think that it's like fake. Mm. It's not fake. It's yeah. called self-development. Yeah. It's just real as it gets. Yeah. It's, it's, just, it's crazy because like you can get, there's so much, especially nowadays, like so much, I mean, just this podcast is free, right? Like it's insane. Mm-hmm. Back then it was harder, but it's like, there's so much stuff. Yeah. And I think the biggest problem is people listen, they don't apply. It's like, I'm, I'm actively listening with intent to, to, to like, not on every, I'm not going to apply everything, but I'm looking for like, what's the thing that like, that's a needle move. Like, oh yeah, that's the thing. If I grab that, like I met the whole day today with you guys, and like, I'm looking at all these things. I'm like, I have five, four or five things. I'm like, that's like those four or five things. You got four or five, not just one. Yeah, you guys have that's a lot right. of cool stuff happening. So <laughs> that's awesome. I yeah. love that. I'm an overachiever now. <laughs> that's good. You're, you've made a good teacher and or a good student. A lot of people are always just like, "Hey, I've." They get that I've arrived mentality. Obviously, yeah. you do very well for yourself, but you're always constantly looking at how to get better. And I think that's what keeps people excelling, which is really, really cool. I heard someone one time talk about they called it a teachability index. I don't know if he made it up or whatever, but. He was like, when you're young, your teachability index is really high. Like everyone yeah. said something like, you excited. Yep, so and then the worst thing happens is like, you go through school and then you graduate. Someone gives you a degree and you're like, ah, oh, I'm smart. And then your teachability index drops to zero. Mm, yeah. and, that's, and the rest of people's lives, they stop there. Yeah. I remember he said that. I was like, okay, how do I, I need to keep that, whatever that index, that window open. Um, because I look at, I mean, I love my kids. I got 18 year old kids. And I'm like, when I was 18, I thought I knew everything. Like, right. and I look at them now, I'm like, I love them, but they don't know anything. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. They haven't experienced it. And it's like, that's where most people, like 18, they graduate high school, they're, they, they stop learning. Right. Or maybe it's 22 and they've graduated college, but then it's done. It's like, mm-hmm. how do we keep that open? Because there's there's so much growth. And then you see the people who are who are the hyper achievers. It's not that they're smarter or better. They just like are open, like listening and mm-hmm. paying attention versus like, oh, I know this thing, you know? That's cool. They haven't arrived yet. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> Yeah, it's super dangerous to ever think that, you know, you've made it. And then people that yeah. aren't working very hard think they're working too hard. And people that are working too hard <laughs> don't think they're working hard at all. Yeah. Yeah. You know, people that aren't that smart think that they're the smartest. And people that are super smart, they actually are just looking every day for new information mm-hmm. because they don't think they know enough. Right. Yeah. Well, that's how fulfillment comes. Yeah, fulfillment well, well, comes from stretching it's yourself being a winner. to getting new goals and setting different things and reaching things that you didn't know you were capable of. Do you ever feel like you're just afraid somebody knows something you don't know <laughs> and you just have to know it? Oh, for sure. Yeah, like every time I... I, I, like, they I have so many books. <laughs> we have these. Okay, so Andy and I, we don't fight very often. But when we, fight we do, over it's fighting over books. Like, you took my book. I'm not done with that. Like, yeah. hey, quit stealing that. Like, let me finish it. It was like, it's the craziest Listen, thing. She'll, she'll ask me, she's like, 
where's the book I was reading? I'm like, babe, I, uh, she's like, like where's the book? You need me to make the, the book? bed, honey? He'll go, you need me to make the bed? And I'd find him like making the bed, but hiding, reading my book. And I'm like, you're reading my book. It's the funniest thing. Well, listen, because I'll go to the seminar and I'll like drop something out of a book she was reading. She was like, dude, how did you know that? You're not allowed to read any of the books. I'm not read. allowed to tell him what I'm going to talk about ever. Because it'll rip you off. Because yeah, exactly. Well, I told you I have photographic memory. Uh -huh. He does. So I remember everything you say. I'll never forget anything. So whatever she tells me i'll remember it word for word every story exactly the same way i was told it or read That's it crazy. and then i'll tell it <laughs> so before she'll go speak uh she's like i'm not i'm like what are you gonna talk about she's like no ways <laughs> <laughs> no because you're going out before me yeah and i'll go out, out like he said he no, if talk. i, I go before him about. it's a different story well, and I'll i won't even anything. talk about what i was going to talk about i'll just talk about what she's going to talk about <laughs> exactly <laughs> he does that like, yeah two presentations just yeah. in case <laughs> And anyways, That's but uh, but no, self development's the way. So, yeah. um, so you so you started learning. Obviously, click funnels. You started started learning um, internet marketing, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, how to get people to make decisions without really a sales coach necessarily involved face face to face, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Like people like to buy online. People go on Amazon all the time. But if somebody's got a product and nobody's saying yes to it and it's available for sale, that's a problem. Yep. Then you're going to have to go hire a massive sales team, right? Yep. Um, and that's very expensive, and it's hard, and, and it's human capital. You yeah, what you've done people. is insane with your sales team. Like, it's interesting because um, I'm definitely more introverted than you guys. And so, but it, I didn't use that as a, as a crippling thing. I was like, okay, I don't feel as comfortable selling one-to-one. -one. Like, how do I sell one to many? Like, what's that look like? And it's different. Well, that's how you scale too. So one to a million. Yeah. One to a million. Yeah. Right. yeah. The funny thing people are like, how many sales people work for click funnels? I'm like, there's just one. It's me. <laughs> like <laughs> I do it all. Like, but I, I do one to many, right? We do a webinar every single week where I have, you know, four or five, six thousand people on a webinar, do one presentation and I'm probably not good as closing one on one on a phone, but I got 5,000 people. So I don't have to be, you know, yeah. if I close a thousand or 5,000, like it's yeah. a big payday and uh -oh. I can do that every single okay, week. Okay. So let's, let's go there for a minute. Yeah. Okay. You're extremely good at communicating, mm -hmm. right? Yep. You're an introvert, so you weren't always that way. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. How'd you learn how to communicate? Because being one to many, you have to communicate your product very well. Yep. Right? Sure. Let's talk about you this. You have to understand because like when you're talking one to one on someone, you can ask them questions, find out what their concerns are, and then you yes. can resolve them. Whereas when I'm speaking to a thousand or five thousand people, I don't have that ability. Let's so like let, how let's, do I let, let's talk about that. What does your sales process kind yeah. of look like? Um, when there's no back and forth dialogue. Yeah. Right. So yeah, I'll explain how it looks. So <clears throat> for me, it's like when I'm creating a sales presentation, it's typically 90 minutes long. So that's the framework. There's 60 minutes where I am teaching and there's 30 minutes where I'm selling. And so during that 60 minutes, so I have to go and figure out what all their false beliefs are. And I have to reprogram those false beliefs in someone's head. Mm -hmm. Right. That's the whole key. And so the way I structure it, it's pretty simple. Like, um, the entire hour long presentation is about, um, convincing that, that the framework that I'm introducing them to is the best way for them to get the result they want, right? Mm -hmm. So you look at like, somebody comes into your world, there's a result they want. They want to make more money, they want to lose weight, they want to do whatever. And I'm coming saying, look, I have a map. I've gone to this place before and I've got a map. And they, they have to understand in the market, there's 100 people, there's, think about the weight loss market. There's like, there's the keto map and the paleo map and the mm -hmm. so many weight, there's a million maps. And so mm -hmm. my goal is, I, my whole presentation is to convince them that the map that I have to the result they want trumps all the rest of them. Like that's the entire goal of it. I'm not trying to, most people make, that make presentations to masses, they, they're trying to convince people about five or six different things and it's not that. My only okay. goal Simplified. is I like, convince you of one thing. So like when I used to talk about click funnels, you know, someone wants click funnels or a funnel because they want to grow their company. So there's a lot of ways you can grow a company. You can build a sales team, you can drive more traffic. You, so I had to convince them all the ways they could possibly get that result that the funnel is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. So that's the number one is that's the framework. And so when I start my presentation, First thing I have to I have to tell the backstory about how I discovered this framework because mm -hmm. that syncs with them. So I'm like, you know, I was just like you. I tried this. I tried this. I tried this, and none of those things were working for me. Or whatever. And then here's how I discovered the framework. So if it's a backstory. So for me, if you watch my presentation, I tell the potato gun story because I started the potato gun and then uh, stopped converting because Google Ads got too expensive. So then I had an upsell and that became a funnel. And so I tell the potato gun story and I show that so that I tell the backstory and this is how I discovered. Uh, what a funnel is and I use this in all these other markets I did it in speed reading I did it in dating I did it in couponing I did it in like all these other markets and and then I have clients that if this is so I show all of the proof that mm -hmm. my framework works everywhere yeah. and then I'm like so that's what I teach you yesterday so that's like the first you know 20 minutes of the presentation the so they're sucked in they're like this is great like they don't know how to believe it but they saw the result they saw that I got a new map to that result and they're like freaked out about that so that's the that's the intro and then from there I transition to like um, I'm going to go and start teaching the framework and so I teach it though, it's a, it's a little different. The first thing I do, um, and so the, 
it's kind of three sections. So this is the first section out of the actual content part of the presentation. The first section is I'm going to teach them the framework, but so I'm going to tell them the uh, like how I how I discover you know how I, I kind of tell explain that framework again, and then step two then is I teach them the strategy. Mm -hmm. Like here's the overarching strategy, what the framework is, and the third thing. This is where most people make mistakes. I do not teach the tactics. The tactics are things they're buying in the future. Mm -hmm. And so I, no, I don't talk, I don't share the tactics. And then from there, then I share uh, success stories of people who have, who have used the framework. And so that's number one. So by the time that section's done, I want them to be like, oh my gosh, like I get it. I see the strategy. It makes total sense. Like I will, like I believe that this is the right map. And so for, at that point, a percentage of your audience, like 50% of the audience is ready to buy right then. But the other 50%, like they start kind of freaking out. So then the next part of the presentation is um, what, what people do after they after they hear the presentation about the map that you have, then the first thing that they're afraid of is like, well, that's cool that that map, you know, Russell can do a funnel, but I can't because I'm not technical. Or, you know, Andy can do that, but I can't because of this. And so they start looking at themselves like they're not able to do it. Mm, so yeah. the next 15 minutes of the presentation is all about showing them that it's actually possible for them. Right. So in ClickFunnels, I'm showing a demo. Like, let me show you. I just go like this and I drag and drop and it's so simple, right? Or I'm showing like, um, if it's if it's sales, I'd be like showing them like, like, here's five people I took off the street that were really bad at it, and, like, here's the script. They follow the thing, and this is how it worked. And the goal is to be like, oh, my gosh, like, I, I can actually do yeah. that. Mm -hmm. So you think about the presentation so far. They, I explained the framework. They're pumped about it. I, I, walk them through the, I walk them through it. They're like, okay, I do believe it's this applicable. will work. Mm -hmm. I actually believe I can do it. And then the third piece, and this is the last 15 minutes of the content, is they're looking, their brain's looking for some other out. So usually they're trying to blame some external force. Mm -hmm. So the first is like, no, it's me. I can't do it. And like, I, I can do it, but... My this. Wife. Yeah, I don't have time. Hundred percent. Yeah. And so then the third thing I'm teaching is I'm, I'm taking that false belief. And I got to tell the story that's going to rewrite that false belief. So in my world, it's always traffic. Like, like I believe funnels the best thing in the world. I believe I can actually do it now. I don't have to write traffic. Mm -hmm. So I got to show them like how simple it is to get traffic. In the weight loss market, it's usually like here's the diet. It's like I believe I can actually live this way. Mm -hmm. But my spouse buys cookies every single day, and I'm not going to. My kids are always eating ice cream. Like it's not going to work. So I got to address that. Mm -hmm. And if I can convince them the framework's the right framework, this is the yeah. math they need. They could actually do it. And there's no external forces holding them. Then they're in. Right. And then after that hour's done, now I transition to the to the pitch, and that's how I do it. That's and true. so it's it's simple, but it's uh, but it, you know it's but it's understanding the psychology of that. That's what we have to break. It's breaking those, all those false beliefs. And if we can do that, then at the end of it, they're just waiting. Like how long did it minute. take you to figure that out? <laughs> like it says, it seems like it's something that you're constantly evolving at, right? Yeah. But how long did it take you to figure that <laughs> part out? It took me a long. So. So my background is um, after I, the potato gun thing, I went to the seminar, and I remember this is back when they used to do uh, seminars like multi-speaker, and every speaker would speak and sell. And mm -hmm. I didn't know that's how it worked. Mm -hmm. So I went to this first seminar, and I'm like, I'm like this young kid in college. I had glasses and a shaved head, and I'm sitting there like taking notes, and the first speaker gets up, and he talks for 90 minutes, and he pitches something. And I'm like so confused, and everyone's jumping up, running to the back of the room, and I was like, what's happening? And I think yeah. it was a $2,000 thing he sold. And they're running the back room. I remember looking back, and I was doing the math. I was like, two, four, six, eight. I'm like, that guy made sixty thousand dollars in yeah. ninety minutes. I was like, what in the world? Next guy gets up to speak. He starts speaking. He sells a five thousand dollar thing, and people start running to the back. Same thing. I'm looking back. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. I was like, he made one hundred twenty thousand dollars in ninety minutes. And so the next speaker, and I was like, I was like, I'm scared to death of talking to people. But this <laughs> is a skill set. If there's a human being who puts his pants on the same way I do, who can stand on stage and in ninety minutes make a hundred thousand dollars, like I have to learn the skill, right. at whatever it takes. And so that became like, this is the skill set I have to learn. And what so did you study to, to help with that? So initially, so initially, I did a lot of people. Like, I was like, oh, I can do this. And so I got invited to speak at an event. I remember getting there, and I did my first presentation. And then um, I remember thinking, like, oh, these speakers don't know what they're talking about. I, like, I, I taught the best stuff. I'm like, I'm going to blow their minds. And then I remember I did my pitch at the end, and I was like, I'm not going to insult you guys like the other speakers are. This is the price. That's what it is. Go buy it in the back of the room. And then nobody moved. It was just like that awkward cricket. So I was like, Oh, and I'm standing on stage, you know, and there's people, nobody's moving. And I think normally they turn on music at the end. The guy didn't turn the music on because he didn't know what was happening. And I stood there like, <laughs> so I kind of awkwardly <laughs> walked off stage. It was so embarrassing. I remember, uh, I remember like, so I, ran, I, I walked off and I ran to my hotel room and I was there for two more days for the event. And I stayed in the hotel room. I sat there eating. Uh, I remember ordering room service. First time in my life I ordered room service. For two days I ordered coconut shrimp and haagen ice cream watching movies i was like i'm never gonna speak again this was the worst thing ever like i was like i'm never gonna do this again you said nobody moved in the music it was the coming. worst it was like especially yeah. as an introvert i was like now what do i do like how do i get off the stage out of this room without like, anybody seeing no me clapping. they're all just like sitting there looking at me i'm like yeah it was it was bad and so i was like i swore i, I swore i would never do it again and then a couple months later i went to another event and i saw it happening again i was like there's got to be a way so 
um, I started finding the people who were going to speak. And I was like, how are you guys, like, what am I doing wrong? And they're like, oh, you think this is about teaching. It's not. It's like, this is about breaking their false beliefs. Like, you come and show them all this stuff. It's like, you can't serve someone in, in 60 minutes. Like, you cannot give them the tactics they need to be successful. Right. That's not your job. Your job is to prove that they can actually do it. And then take that, that conversation separately. We can actually work with them. Right. And they told me that. And so I started, I started trying to like, understand that. And then uh, I made my next presentation. And I remember uh, I asked a bunch of speakers. I got some feedback. And I did a presentation. And that time, I remember I sold six people at 1000 bucks. I was like, six grand. Like, okay, this is working. Start somewhere, yeah. And then um, for... For the next three or four years, I was on the road once a month speaking at some event, and I would always go the day before, and I'd listen to every single speaker, and I'd just sit there and watch them. I was like, what are they doing? How are they doing it? I watched how some speakers speakers really good at NLP, and they would use commands. Some people were very hypnotic. They'd use hypnotic language. I saw some people have the anchor stage in the back of the room, and all these things. I was just taking notes on everyone, and I would model them. And I'd do my presentation again, and all of a sudden, it would make more money. And then every pres every time I get a presentation, I would save the PowerPoint slide, I would put the new date on it, and then I would make tweaks. I'd do it again, do it again, and so it was like four or five years of doing that, a couple times a month, and it just kept getting better and better and better. And then 2008 hit, and live events disappeared, like they were just gone overnight. And so I was like, yeah. well, I guess I'm retired as a speaker because it was over. And but um, that then people were doing teleseminars. We guys around during teleseminars. Mm -hmm. This is pre webinars. So like you promote a phone number, everyone would call in and they listen in. And so. Uh, and you had no idea how many people were listening. You just knew that I told them the call starts at nine and hopefully they're there. So like you do this, you talk for an hour to yourself, hoping that someone's there and then you sell them something and you just look to see if anyone bought. And I was like, oh, somebody bought. And like people would buy. And so I started doing those and it was really weird because. A teleseminar. <laughs> yeah, and you never see anybody. And so it's like, but I got really good at like pretending like I'm standing in front of an audience, even though it's me on my phone in my house, just cause like, it, and I got really good at that. And then eventually it morphed to webinars. And then we did webinars for a long time. Um, and just got kept getting better and better. And um, when events started coming back, it was cool because all the old dudes who I was learning from had all retired when events ended. And then like they started coming back again, and I was like, I'm the only one that knows the skill set. This is crazy. And I started going to events, started speaking, and then I remember I went to Grant Cardone's uh, his first ten X, maybe second one. He didn't know who I was, and I got on stage, and all the speakers were selling, and like it's just it was a nightmare. No one's closing anybody. It's just like it was it was embarrassing. So I got out there, and I did it my way. And I remember because. I asked Grant, I'm like, I need tables with papers. People can like fill out the forms. He's like, you don't get any tables. So I had Alex and Layla Hermosi had a box of order forms on one door. And then Dave Woodward, my partner, had a box of order forms. They had a handful of pens. And I did my pitch. And we freaking closed half of that room. People were running. They're handing out pens and throwing them. And, and Grant came over afterwards. He's like, I've never seen that in my entire life. I was like, I know. No one, no one knows how to do this anymore. It's a dead art. And then a year later, took me to uh, the Big 10X. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did $3.2 million in sales in 90 minutes. Set a world record. Wow. And, uh, and now we've trained people in every every market you can dream of, like how to do the pitch, and it's work, it works everywhere. It's flawless. Um, we so call it the perfect amazing. webinar because it's perfect. It's just it's a script. It's 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 awesome. The psychology behind it is just it's really simple. I love what you said um, about killing their limiting beliefs, uh -huh. right? You said like step one is mm -hmm. you, first of all you have to attack everything in their life that they believe is. Mm -hmm. Real that's not real. Yeah, right? they have so much resistance coming into it. I'm sure same thing as you're doing phone, mm -hmm. right? Like, there's a reason why they're not doing this, and it's like something you have, you have to rewrite that belief. And so, it's me. I have to tell a story in a way where my story trumps the story that already telling themselves. They already have stories. So it's been in there for years. Mm -hmm. I got to tell a story that trumps it. Like I think about this. Um, we wrote a pitch for the network marketing industry one time, and like the story of the people who hate network marketing is like I tried it before. I called my friends and family, and my mom and dad, and they all hate me. And like. So they had this story of like, no, like you, you lose all your friends if you're network marketing. And so then I wrote a, in the in the presentation, we wrote a pitch about how like how the the guy who was doing this, he he built this huge network marketing company, and never talked to one of his friends. It was all generating leads online. And I showed like like no, you don't actually talk to people. Like these people actually will fill out a form, raise their hand, saying they're interested in information, and you call them and you sign them up. Mm -hmm. And like and so I tell that story, they're like, oh. That story disappears. It's like, there's a better way. I didn't realize that's a thing. And yeah. also now they're open. Yeah. But I until like I show that story, they're not going to be open because they're fighting me back. Yeah, talking of to course. people who are requesting information isn't a problem. Oh, so yeah. But they're just thinking about buzzing, but wearing their family out. Yeah. yeah. So every time I do a presentation, that's the question. Like, what's the false belief they have? And what's the story behind it? Like, why do they believe that? Okay, what story do I have that can trump that story? Yeah. And then break the false belief and rewrite it with the new belief they need. Yeah. It's crazy. It's cool shit. <laughs> yeah. And then here, and then here we it's are. common ground right there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and you you've uh, you've got five kids. Yeah, you're married. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. For um, 22, 22 years. years. Yep. Twenty two. Going strong. That's good. <laughs> you you That's graduated good. in your 18, 17. From high school. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 17, 18. 
But you, then he went to college. You went on a mission after college or after high school? I went to, so I went to so graduate high school, uh, and then wrestled one year at Brigham Young University, and then went on my mission for two years in New Jersey. Mm. And then BYU dropped the wrestling program. I was gone, so I came back, went to Boise State, and finished my career there. Yeah, I love that. So you you were in door-to-door sales. Yeah, door-to-door yeah. sales, selling religion. <laughs> I, I, I tell a lot of people all the time, like, like sales is so good for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's so good. A lot of people see you as a businessman today, and they know you work with technology and all kinds of stuff. You're a great sales guy. Mm. That's what you are. You're a great sales guy. Yeah. And, and I you think, never gave up. Yeah. And, and I think that, you know, when, when you went to be a missionary, right, in New Jersey, yeah. um, you know, you're selling a very hard product. You're selling religion. Yeah. You're telling people to give up everything in their life. <laughs> I was telling you last night, the pitch was like... Uh, yeah, you have to give up alcohol, tobacco, coffee, tea, all premarital, extramarital sex, and ten percent of your income for the rest of your life. In exchange, you may get salvation if you don't mess up. Like that's the pitch. Like that's the hardest thing in the world to sell. That's why you look at like the greatest salespeople are all Mormon missionaries. Like they're selling cutco knives, they're selling pest control, like Dude. all this stuff so easy next to you mm-hmm. know it's what, so you, what we cut our teeth on. And I <laughs> yeah. see that. I yeah. see these guys making a million, two million, three million a year. Yeah. And a lot of them, they learned it and and. And they're, they're missionary, and a lot of them went yeah. overseas. They became resilient. They're used to getting the learned door slammed. New, you know, well, but they even had to learn a new language. Yeah. yeah, and then selling in a different language. Yeah, and but you said you went to Jersey, New Jersey, it's a little and, different language there. And, and <laughs> well, I mean, you, you went from people being you know super loving, everybody waving at you, <laughs> to being like th- throwing the finger you off. You. Yeah, it's, it was a whole new world, and it comes back to the whole like failure thing though too, right? Like mm-hmm. the first couple of days I'm out there, like people slam the door, and I'm like, oh my gosh, they hate me, and re- eventually I realized like. They don't hate me. They hate the message. Like, this has nothing to do with me. And I was able to disconnect myself from that. And I think that's a lot of times people struggle with sales because they get in the fear of, like, oh, they they're reject me. They're, if they reject they're rejecting me. It's like, no, they're just rejecting the offer, the the message, not you. And then when you can disconnect from that, then at least for me, it became fun. Like, we're knocking on, you know, thousands of doors every yeah. single day. And it's like, it became a game. Like, yeah. who can we start a conversation? Who can let us in the door? Who, like, who can we actually help and serve in it, you know? But when you can disconnect yourself from the outcome, it makes it way better. Yeah, you didn't take so. it personally, and you, it became a numbers game then. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I love it. So um, some skills that you would tell, right, like that you think are super important for anybody to be successful. Um, you know, this is, like, this is like value city today. Like what are some skills that you think someone needs to know? I mean, like clearly mastering a stranger. Yeah. Right? Being able to say hello, say hi to people. You're an introvert, mm-hmm. yet you're knocking on people's doors, right? Yeah. Yep. So like I think mastering a stranger would be one. What are some yeah. other ones that you can think of? I think um, over like um, this is actually so we do our big event every year and you know we have five thousand people at it and every time I'm about to go on stage like I get I get the nerves, anxiety, all kind of stuff, right? And I remember I was like anyway just every time and it's like eventually I thought I would grow out of that, right? And I get so nervous, so nervous, and I remember. Before I went out, one of my friends, Annie Grace, she's like the number one person on the planet helping people overcome alcohol addiction. She's insane. Uh, her mind is just is so cool. But she told me uh, right before, she saw me how nervous I was, and she's like, how are you feeling? I'm like, I'm nervous. And she's like, do you realize that inside of your body, the the um, the chemicals and the feeling, everything that's released when you're nervous is identical to when you're excited. There's no difference. Mm. The only difference is the meaning you're attaching to it from excited to nervous. Mm. And so um, she's like, next time instead of saying I'm nervous, I'm excited. And so I started doing that, and it was crazy. Like, literally, it feels exactly the same. I was like, I'm excited, I'm excited. And then you get more excited, and it's like, that's crazy. So I think that as a skill set, like, I'm nervous about the call. Like, I'm excited about this call. Like, just the the, the meaning you attach. Like, control on your shifts thoughts. everything, yeah. 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 It's so simple. It's, it's, yeah, basic thought control. It's that positive shifting the meaning. Yeah, positive um, outlook on it. Yeah, I think that's yeah. such a big skill set. Like, I think fear is what keeps most people from doing everything. Like, it's true. Like, every single day we have these two options. There's faith and fear, faith and fear. And they're always just, like, this tug of war against ourselves. Mm-hmm. And yeah. some days we give into fear, some days we give into faith, and it's just like. The more times you can you can overcome fear and go into faith, like that's how you how you level up every single day. Um, mm. But it's so that's that's the battle, right? What are some I'm things like you think you need to stay away from? If you want to make it, stay away from these things. Um, yeah, like some things that some decisions you've made by 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 maybe doing them wrong mm-hmm. and then learning. Like don't do that. Trust <laughs> me, I did it. Or yeah. like just to say, hey, I you know I didn't do it, but I watched a lot of people do it. Yeah. What are some things? I think the biggest one I see this all the time is. Um, just what you put in your body, like alcohol, um, like smoking drugs, drugs like mm-hmm. even even like little ones, even like caffeine, like I, all those things we put in our bodies that they give us an effect. Like um, we become dependent upon it, and it's like it's crazy. And I don't know. I've I've met so many insanely talented people who 
drugs and alcohol takes away these things. And then like sometimes they're like, oh, I smoke weed, I get more creative. I'm like, yeah, but you lose your desire, you lose your edge, and like maybe you feel more creative, but now you lose. Like it's just like those things always take more than they ever give. Mm. Um, the most successful yeah. people are the ones who are that I've ever seen are the ones who don't do that, especially long term. Um, so I'm a big believer in that. I try to, to protect myself, my mind from those kind of things. Um, I think the biggest problem people have one of the biggest problems is uh, people are skeptical like I've never in my life met someone who's skeptical and successful mm. like they're just they're, they don't go hand in hand you know what I mean yeah, they're and not risk takers yeah so it's like people are like oh I'm skeptical about this I'm like <laughs> like I know exactly where you like where you function your entire life because yeah people are skeptical and never successful so it's like and yeah sometimes you'll get burned but I'd rather get burned right. uh, one time out of ten and actually pers- you know progress moving forward versus versus the opposite Staying side the where same, yeah. you never move because you're so afraid of of it, you know, fear of faith. It's like, ah, like I'm gonna do my best, make the best decisions, and and I mess up a lot. I'm sure you guys do too, right? Yes. Like, oh, you bring on the wrong partner, or the wrong person, or whatever, and and um, but the fear of not doing it's almost worse. It's true. Probably is worse. It is worse, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Doing nothing is a lot worse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For sure. um, Very similar in our journeys. I think the more you similar. talk, uh-huh. it's crazy how you know we identify so much with what you're saying. Mm-hmm. It's just crazy. It's awesome. Um, what about God? So about God, like that's an important piece, right? Huge for me, yeah. for you. Let's talk about that for a minute. Yeah, so because I think that's important to share with people because that's a foundation in our life, and yeah. I know it's a big part of yours. Yeah, a lot of people hide that, and I don't think that yeah. to you it's like so important, yeah. and to us it is as well. So it's like, yeah. you know, why not? Yeah, let's talk about it. Yeah, so for me, it's interesting. Uh, I had a really good coach, luckily, who pointed this out to me. But my whole life, I thought there's like, here's me, like. Russell doing his business, his mission, whatever you call it, and then there's like Russell who's spiritual, and like these are two different worlds. Like mm-hmm. my life, they, they did not. They thought they were different things, different parts of my life. And once I had this coach, and it was interesting because she was talking to me. She's like, "You don't see it, do you?" Mm-hmm. I'm like, "See what?" She's like, "You don't really like you don't see that like what you're doing here is 100 percent connected with what your spiritual mission is. Like it's the mm-hmm. same thing." Yeah. I was like, "What are you talking about? I help people build funnels." She's like, "No, no, no." She's like, "You help people make money." I'm like, "Yeah, make, make, make money." She's like, "You understand like when people make money." Then they're able to like not have the stress anxiety of like trying to survive, and then they can grow. They can help people. They can serve. They can do things. Mm. She's like, she's like, what you are doing is something God wants you to do because it's like releasing people so they can be the people they're called to be. Mm. And that was the first time I ever connected those two things mm. together. And the more I thought about, it, I was like, what I realized and what I, I believe like deep in my heart is like every single person who comes to this planet like is called to serve a group of people. Like, and based on our, our circumstances, our trials, our errors, our mistakes, all that kind of stuff, it's like there's a group of people who are specifically called that we're supposed to be serving, right? And so for me, it's like, like I know who my people are. Like, they are, I call them my funnel hackers, but they're my people. That's who I've been called to serve. And um, and I think everyone's got that. And most people don't ever, don't ever pursue that, but like, we all have that calling. And the scripture says many are called, but few are chosen, right? Like, why are they not chosen? because they're not willing to step into that. And I think we all feel that. We feel that, that pull, and most people don't, don't follow. So for me, it's like, I'm a strong believer now to my core that like God is like this is the calling from God that these people have been called to serve. And and then what's interesting inside of that is um is and this is this is the thing a lot of people who, who try to who try to serve people like they, they struggle with is like well, I'm trying to serve people but some people aren't listening or they're angry or they're mean to me mm-hmm. or they talk yeah. trash and like there's all that kind of thing and, and I remember I was struggling with that too one day and I was reading in the scriptures, uh Christ was talking and he said that um he said, uh, my sheep will hear my voice and will be one fold with one shepherd. And I remember thinking, I was like, think about with Christianity, like Christ was there, he put his words out into the world and his people found him and they, they followed him, right? And that's and that's been happening for, for years. It's like, for us, it's the same thing. Like it's a, it's an eternal principle. Like like we put our words out there and then our sheep will find us. Our people who've been called to serve will find us if we're willing to put our words out there. Right. Which is why podcasting, video, all this stuff is actually really, really important because it's you being able to gather your sheep. And that right. doesn't mean that you're gonna gather everyone. Like there's people who are not my sheep. You go into Google and go five or six pages down. Those people are not my sheep. They hate me. They don't like. You know, there's people that don't like me. I understand that. And I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. But like my sheep, like they hear yeah. my voice. And so it's like all I gotta do is I gotta put in my message up, putting it out there, putting it out there, that's and my great. my people will come to me. That's I awesome. think that's the biggest thing. So for me, it's like like what we're all doing is is bigger than I think any of us actually realize. Huge. I love and so it's that. like, but yeah. And so like my biggest fear now is like I don't want to someday, you know, when I return back to God, and He's like, dude, like. You could have done so much more. Like there's right. this, these people. Your sheep are out there, and you quit. Or you stop doing it. Right. I ask all the time, like, why are you still doing this, Russell? Like, you've been doing this. You know, I'm 22 years in this business now. Like, you don't need it for money. I'm like, yeah, it's it's this like constant for me. It's just like yeah. I, I have a Living calling. Your true and potential. Those are my people. And I got to figure out how to serve them. And so that's. Yeah. 
I love I love how he how he says that though. It's like you know we talk about being one dimensional and and really focusing on business. Like it, it's in everything. It's in it's in your belief in God, but it's also in your marriage. You don't we don't separate any of that. We are who we are, and we grow everything at the same time. You know, with our people and everything. So it's it's really it's all cool. one unit. It's all one unit, and that's how yeah. you really have sustainable growth because yeah. we've made money, lost money, we weren't on the same page, and then you know things happen. But I mean, you don't have we don't have actor switches where we're like hey we're gonna show up to work and we're gonna act this way and then turn it off and be different no if you really love what you do and you really believe that you're fulfilling a calling from god and you're helping people i mean you're gonna share it with everybody yeah and it's pretty awesome that you do that so i think that it's that's cool you guys, like i've never seen anyone do as well as you guys with like between your family and your kids and the company like just me coming here i was like this is like all your kids it's insane like they are our kids I mean? it's everybody such a cool yeah. thing. it's awesome um it's really magical you guys yeah. created well, we always you. say like okay. if you can't find it build, build it. it yeah yeah build it yeah like like you can build it you can do whatever you want if you can think about it like we're visionaries i mean everybody's a visionary mm -hmm. but like you said most people see a dream and they don't do anything with it so they just hold on to that dream and then they don't do nothing and then one day they're going to regret yeah. and uh me and jackie you know you can think about what you've been through and think what were the good and then what was the bad yeah. and then we thought man how do me and her function the best out of love mm -hmm. and love is christ-like but love like it's all love like me and her we have we feel no stress when we're left when me and her are close we have no worries mm -hmm. like dude when we're separated and then there's a problem it's like it eats us alive and makes us sick yeah, and it becomes a bigger problem as well it's like you're you're talking about the people that don't like you or whatever it is we focus on those people we're not doing enough to actually change so it's like we're talking about stress like i used to stress out about a lot of silly little things and st until i got a lot of stuff to do and then those things were nothing you just yeah, become adaptable small, yeah. so it's it's all about well, and plus the when we stay close mm -hmm. i mean like so our team the more the closer that we all are the more powerful we all are mm -hmm. right yeah and, um, you know, I think that's the key, man. I think like, you know, building your unit, building your people you're going to do life with. Yeah. And I'm a, I collect people. Mm -hmm. So people may say, well, that's weird. <laughs> no, no, it's actually not weird yeah. because like, I know who I need around me. I know that I need, look, one friend in my life right now is dying out. And I don't mean like physically dying. I mean, they're giving up, they're stopping, they quit believing they don't want it as much. I don't know. They're full. Mm -hmm. Did I wake up? I, I go to bed, you know, exhausted I wake up starving I mean I'm I'm ready I want to empty my tank every day I don't yeah. want to waste any time if God hasn't made me sick if I'm healthy and I'm alive I think it's disrespectful to sick people sick people for me not to give it everything that I have yeah. Yeah. and that's how you have your purpose cool. too like you fulfill that's how you find your fulfillment and purpose in life mm -hmm. yeah so you got to get around people that are psycho you know my <laughs> my you know like we were talking about psycho competitors all day yeah like like psycho you know like people who really want to live their life and who really want to make it count by the way this intensity it's not always in business like it like we're when you're seeing everybody up here like we're intense in our marriage mm -hmm. we're intense with our kids you know we're intense with staying in love we're intense with like the fitness side yeah. we're intense with taking care of our customers we're intense with like self-development self-improvement you know growing we're intense with being financially free we're intense be, you know being mentally free mm -hmm. you know we're intense taking care of our our, our friends yeah. you know we're intense. we keep it new you know it's like we always talk about what what creates burnout well what creates burnout what did you want to do what did you want to prove when you first got that job or that career you started your business you wanted to prove that you belong that, that you were going to outwork everybody when you got with your with your wife you wanted her to look up to you you wanted her to admire you wanted to her to you know you wanted to prove yourself all these different things you know when you became a new dad what did you do you wanted to be the best dad in the world all these different things people lose their purpose when they quit trying to prove themselves so we're constantly mm -hmm. trying to stretch ourselves to grow I love seeing people and prove it, that's themselves. what we do yeah. we can't let we can't get burnt out because we don't let the newness wear off so that's mm -hmm. that's that's how day one baby it's day one every day <laughs> get married every day yeah it's day yeah. one and it's your last day yeah. Like I, I was telling everybody, I was in uh, Boise, right, and which is where you're from, and you were flying here, <laughs> I was flying there, there, right? That's so funny, yeah. <laughs> and I, I was, I was telling, um, is CBH Homes or something like yeah, that? What? Barton Homes. Yeah, and um, they're 70, 80 percent women. Oh, really? Yeah, it's it's like a f all like female alpha team. Uh -huh. And I said, ladies, That's let's awesome. just pretend that it was your last year you were going to live, and you knew it. What would change? What relationships? How would you work? How would you take care of yourself? How would you want to go out? If everybody was going to remember you and this was your last year, yeah. 
you know, would you lay low or would you go hard as hell so everybody could to leave your you mark. know be remembered, you know, of, of how much you cared, how much you gave, you know, your vision, your thought, you spoke your mind, you you changed people's lives. I'm like, come on, that's that's how we got to play. Because the truth of it is, is that look, dude, it could be our last day. You know, we could shoot this podcast and I go drop you off at the airport and die on the way back. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It could happen. We see it happen all the time. Like shit happens. So it's like, dude, I just don't want to be that that person that's like disrespectful of the fact that we're still healthy. We can give all we got. And, you know, and if you're supposed to be dead, you'd already be dead. Yeah. But if you're alive, somebody's watching this right now and they're like, oh, I don't feel worthy. Dude, listen, you wouldn't be here if somebody didn't have something big in store for you. Mm-hmm. Now, the devil is trying to kill, steal, destroy and crash everything in your life. And God's like, come on, wake up, go find mm-hmm. yourself a buddy. And that's when it says like iron sharpens iron. Like you came down here, us getting together, you know, you meet my wife. I mean, every time, everything from us, you know, from eating dinner last night to working out this morning in the gym to being here to going to lunch, she's been with me the whole way. Yeah. Dude, you can choose to do it. However, how many guys do you go and you see and you meet them or you get together, but you don't see their wives a lot. It's like, dude, like, we're going to roll till we die. Like, we can do anything the way we want it. We can create whatever life we want. I was going on a private jet one time where this guy's like, hey, I want you to go on this private jet. There's this big, like, $100 million deal. I want you to be a part of it. And I was like, cool, man, let's go. Let's do this. I was like, yeah. And then um, he's like, okay, awesome. I was like, yeah, remember, you got to add my wife. Remember, Jacqueline will be there with me. And he's like, oh, yeah, it's it's just guys. Like, we, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, hey, we love the wives. That's cool. I'm like, well, this ain't my wife. This is my everything. Mm-hmm. She rolls. Or I don't roll. Mm-hmm. And she was there. And uh, and he's like, yeah, but I was like, dude, there's no buts. If she ain't there, I ain't there. Mm-hmm. And and he's like, no, we made it. And we're like, no, we don't want to go now. Because like, I can feel But that then he met me later go. and he loved me. So that's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but, but my point is, is that, awesome. is that people don't understand that you can have what they've never seen. Mm-hmm. Okay? And I think that that's the cool thing. Like you built ClickFunnels, right? No one saw it. You mm-hmm. saw it. You created it. You found the right people, right? You found the people that could help you build it. Yep. You know, you love those people. You take care of those people. You want to spend more time with those people. And But sometimes people got to go, too. I think only some, some people are on with you for a season of our life. There's a guy I started our company with when we first started it. And I'm saying, like, it's totally cool. People change over time. Yeah. Look, you can't make people good people. People got to want to be good people. Yeah. There but was then, a guy who was an alcoholic. He drank all the time. He almost got a divorce. He was His kids hated him. And we turned them around, got them to stop drinking, made them fall in love with each other, got them to be a great dad. And then at the end of the day, he just lost wants to go purpose. back to his whole life, lost his whole purpose. <laughs> but my point is when that happens, you know what you do? You go find the, the person that's supposed yeah, to be You're not going to change chapter. how you are with the rest of the people that are around you. That oh, that's survive. a fact. Yeah. A lot of people get scarred and they don't let those scars, those scars, you know, heal. They, they're, they, they. You know, it's like your failure you're talking about. Like when, if you would have failed and you wouldn't have kept chasing what mm-hmm. you were after, then you wouldn't be here today. You know, yeah. you need to keep going and you need to keep proving that. And we, the, the team doesn't deserve it. We have to show them massive amounts of love. So what do we do? We go harder. Mm-hmm. We show them more love. Dude, I love we it. Shit don't asleep. go as planned. It means I'm you're a- alive. You get hurt. That means you're alive. That means you have a heart. Yeah. That means you, that God gave it to you so you can use well, it. Well, also, like, you got to look at, like, you always got to have this mentality. And I think, you know, we've been talking about self-development the whole time, like things that we've learned, things that we've studied. But, like, also, I think to, to end, like, on this on a good note, like, um, or on, on this note, like, you got to find the good in everything. Mm-hmm. Right? For sure. Like, you got to find the good in it, you know? Right. Like, you know, I'm always like, where's the good in this? And when that, I'm just giving an example, the young lady that we went to lunch with, right? Yeah. That you met, she's super cool, right? Yeah, she's awesome. When that guy left, she showed up hmm. twice as much. We made a million dollars after that happened, additional per month. Mm-hmm. Right out the gate. Her, yeah. Hey, no, no, no. It, she, it was time to roll. It, was, it just shows you when someone rolls, right, someone else is coming in. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, so instead of me saying, oh, man, that sucks, it's like, man, God's got something better for us. It's yeah. always. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, God's got something better for us. So. You know, and or, or maybe not the, something better, but maybe, you know, there's like, this needs to happen now. Yeah, but you know how I'm many saying? people get turned off with the idea of, you know, going and chasing their full potential or doing something big because they have a bad experience? Yeah. Like, that's just the thing. That the whole lesson of this is you just got to keep going. If you, if you feel called to do something, you can't let those things stop you. Yeah. You have to just keep, keep running with them. People with that punches. don't quit eventually get what they want. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I thought it was a lot. Like I thought about like just even the ideas. Like I feel like God gives us ideas or gives us something, right? And He's like testing to like 
I wonder if Russell's gonna be a good steward of this idea, right? Mm. So for me, he's like, give me a potato gun idea, like, mm. and then I did it. He's like, oh, he did something with it. Like, let me give him another mm. idea, a little better, and he gave me the next one, and the next one, and eventually through that process, I became worthy of like, oh, here's click funnels. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But like, but he's trying to see because how many times you like had you see someone do something like oh, I had that idea too, and it's like, oh crap, like I didn't do anything with it. That guy. Oh, that's did. good. And so I always right. think about that. Like, I've, as like, I feel like God's given us ideas to see like, are we gonna be a good steward of that? So for me, it's always like the same thing, like. Something shows up, like I'm gonna do it. I gotta do it because otherwise someone else is gonna do it. And then I proved I wasn't a good steward. And the next idea is not gonna come. The next one's not gonna come. Like yeah. I want to make sure I'm a good steward, so the next one will keep showing up in front of me. And uh, anyway, I was thinking so about that good. all the time. Yeah. Even sometimes I get an idea. I'm like, I don't want to do that one. I'm like, ah, all right, here we go. <laughs> right. And yeah. A lot of a lot of times, I mean, it's timing too. You know, when you, when you do do things. I mean, I wrote something about that a while ago. Like we get so many opportunities that come our way because I mean we live in the United States I mean you yeah. you have so many opportunities and we don't take action we just kind of just let them fly by you know and then you become you know kind of like scarred to that like you don't take action because you be you be you're not open to it you don't you're not your eyes aren't in tune with that so the fact that you decided to be yeah. you know that that means that you were in tune with that so in turn you get a lot of opportunities to do different things which is really cool well, especially like you said when you're when you're an action taker everything goes back to that you've taken action to everything in your life mm-hmm. and that's why you got what you got yeah mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah because you execute it's like people that you know are learn you know how to achieve success you know they can go broke and then they'll make it up again like and then people that really weren't meant to be successful you take it away and then they stay broke you know so if you really know how to do it you can rebuild your wealth over and over and over it doesn't matter what obstacle you run across it doesn't matter what the economy does it doesn't matter how many COVID's hit it doesn't matter you're going to rebuild every single time yeah, yeah. and i think a way. lot of the times too and we'll say one last thing when you were when you were uh had these ideas, potato gun, this, that, this, I remember all these when ideas. Those, oh my gosh, I but, remember that. But, but you know, how many times do you have an idea and people like say, like, that's stupid, Yeah. right? All the time. Yeah, all the time. Yeah. And so at the end of the day, I think like on your entrepreneurship journey mm-hmm. is that when you're pursuing something, like understand it's just part of the game mm-hmm. that most people in your life aren't gonna support you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, like you have to understand that, right? And um, as long as you know that it's going to work, yeah. Yeah. nobody knows what's in you. Did they you? don't know your heart. They don't know your brain. Right. Yeah. They don't know you. They're not you. So if they can't physically know that you're capable of pulling this off, even though no one else is capable of pulling it off. Yeah. You, you had your dad support you, you know, obviously during your, your wrestling career and all that. Like, did you have a lot of people tell you you were stupid for starting, you know, ClickFunnels? Because <laughs> we had a lot of people telling us we were stupid when we started our business. Like, what do you think did you well, get we, any we quit that? our job, yeah. And they said that. Dude, you're dumb. Yeah. yeah. I think it, for me, every step of the, every step has been that way. We're saying, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? In fact, even uh, we met, you mentioned earlier, like I've been buying these old books and collecting them. And, um, you know, I think I told you about like 18,000 books in the last three years, these old first edition books. And my whole team's like, what is he doing? And they're like, ask like, you're crazy. Like, some of the, one of my guys like, do we need to hire a shrink? Like, these books keep showing up. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, do you not trust me at this point? Like, I have an idea. I have a vision. Something's amazing. Like, what's the vision? I'm like, I can't explain it. I can see it, but I don't know how to explain it. But, like, I know where I'm going. And then it was, like, two years later, uh, I was, like, ready just to explain the mission. And my team's like, I think he lost his mind. So they set the cameras. And I did a pitch for it on the camera. And it got done. And one of the guys was crying. The other guy had chills. He's like, oh, my gosh. Like, I had no idea that's what you were doing. I was like, no one did. Like, I didn't even know. But, like, that's, the, like, I don't always know, like, I don't know the end of it. I just know directions. Like, that's the direction I'm going. Again, the Wait, idea shows up. Visionary. Show up, show up, show up. And eventually it becomes clear. But faith, you know, faith, that's how faith works, right? Like, you don't know the path. Or it's not faith. Like, oh, there's a path. It's not faith. That's, yeah. that's knowledge. So faith is like, I feel like I'm called to go that direction. I don't mm. know what's over there. A bunch of fog in between here now. I'm going to take a step. And then the lights, then you take that step and the fog clears a little bit. You're like, okay, take another step. And, another step. and that's what faith is, right? And so for me, it's like, it's that way with all these ideas. Like, even click phones. It was like, you know, when we started, it was like, I don't know if people are going to buy this thing. And then we, you know, spent eight months trying it and then we launched it. And no one was buying it. We tried the next thing. And then I was like, I. We went this direction for a reason. There's got to be something here, like, mm-hmm. hopefully, because we're pretty deep into it now, you know. And then, sure enough, eventually, if you just keep pursuing it, it's like, oh, it all starts making sense. It's yeah. badass. Anyway. I love it. That's <laughs> good. Do you have a good support system along yeah. it? That's great. That's I have awesome. an amazing wife and kids and then uh, really good partners and people around us that, um, yeah. It's nice because they let me do stuff that's crazy that makes sense to them yeah. a lot of times, but they trust me now at this point where it's like, you know, which, which helps. And that's hard initially, you know, before you – had success it's hard because people don't trust you don't you believe have to prove yourself mm-hmm. yeah. um so you just got to kind of do it and y- you got to be your biggest cheerleader b- biggest believer at first and i think it's not giving up it's like for me it's like i like 
like, I know this works. I know it's going to work. I know it's going to work. Yeah. I remember thinking about when I was first starting my business, I was in college, and, and I was watching other people doing it. I'm like, they can't be that much smarter than me. Like, even if I did half what they were, a tenth of what they were doing, it would still be amazing. They mm-hmm. can't be that much smarter. So I kept trying and trying, and eventually it was like, oh, it worked, you know? And um, and then they all become, you know, the same people that are teasing you one day, and the next day they're asking for a job, or they're telling other people how they met you one day, how they used to know you, you know? So that's, that's it. cool. Yeah, I bought your training course, and now we're wrestling. <laughs> yeah. You didn't wrestle. Hanging out. I know. You I didn't know. Wrestle. He's not a wrestler, though. <laughs> no, I'll wrestle. I'm just not any good at it. I Look, I, I, I know this. I know what I'm good at. I only take bets I know I can win. He does. Right? That, he's really I'm the good sales at that. guy. I only take bets I can know I can win. So if I'm like, I'm, if, you know, like, number one, I fought a lot as a kid, uh-huh. but I damn sure wasn't an MMA fighter. Mm-hmm. Okay, and we're in an era right now where there's a lot of MMA fighters, yeah. so I'm not trying to Every fight anybody. Yeah. yeah. So, but I'm really good at selling. So I like selling. I'm really good at communicating. So I like communicating. Um, You're also good, good at triggering people. Yeah, I'm good at triggering Just saying. people. I, I like doing certain things. Um, wrestling. I mean, I wrestled as a kid, but I didn't wrestle wrestle. You guys wrestled every day. I'm not going to wrestle somebody that wrestles every day. I'm going to lose. There's no way. And that's, I'm going to do now, what I'm going to Now, tickle Andy Elliott and he will kill. Like, oh, he's yeah. not, yeah, he's, if, you tickle me, if you tickle him, he gets violent. I have some superpower violence that yes. comes over me. He that, is one that you okay. can't just be like, hey. He's like, <laughs> boom. I'm like, okay, we're not doing that again. Like, yeah. <laughs> Note to self. Don't yeah. tickle him. We've never gotten violent, but he will get violent if you tickle him. Don't tickle him. <laughs> yeah, so. But so I think I like to take bets I know I can win. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, I think entrepreneurship is a bet that everyone can take. Um, Even an entrepreneur is is awesome, right? You can blow someone else's business up Mm -hmm. and be massive. Actually, I think that's the best way. And then being an entrepreneur, if you want to really be the massive risk taker, just know you're just going to have to not quit. You know what I mean? I think anybody that's smart, 99% of the people should be an entrepreneur for an entrepreneur and just become great. Yeah. Just become the greatest son of a bitch in that company. Become right. a really good leader. Mm-hmm. Even yeah. if you want to be an entrepreneur eventually, I think it's the best way to start. Like, I wish, had I understood that, I would have gone an internship with somebody and, like, done that for a while. Mm-hmm. You know, I tell people, I would work two years for free. Yeah. I would have loved to found someone that I looked up to and worked for them for two years for free. 100%, yeah. And that would have put me 20 years ahead of everyone else. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, because you can't, you can't get close to people like that. Right. But for free. And if you're a good dude. Maybe it's maybe it'll work. Yeah. But, um, That's actually my business partner, Todd. So when he, when I first met him, he came starting programming for a year. He worked for free. Didn't, didn't ask me for money once. Wow. And then um, eventually we started paying a little bit because we had much money time. And then two years later, we had it for ClickFunnels. He's like, I, w- I don't want to be an employee and be your partner. And I was like, all right, let's do it. And the rest is history, you know? But yeah, he, he was, gave he first. Smart. Dude. Yeah, I, I couldn't afford it when he first came in. And so he didn't charge me anything. Just That's awesome. that, being served. that right there, that's, that's the lesson of the whole podcast. Yeah. He gave value. He proved his worth, and then you always say, you always say, you'll never out earn, um, you know, your value, right? So you know, you you, you got to build your value up if you want to make more money. You increase your value, right? And he obviously increases value big time with you, yeah. and you're like, dude, I owe you. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And I want you because you saw his heart too. You know what I mean? And most people they want the money before they want to do the work. Mm-hmm. It's pretty rare yeah. that people actually put the work in first before they want the money. And our whole team moved across the country, not knowing what they were going to get paid. No, they didn't even. They didn't even ask. Really? Yeah. yeah, but they didn't even ask. I mean, all yes. of our guys were like, we were, I was like, hey, you know, I'd like to bring you on the team. They're like, done. I'm packing my shit. That's why we pay. Such I'm breaking my lease, selling yeah. my house, <laughs> shipping my cars. <laughs> For not asking. Like, yeah, and they all moved, and really cool. and they got here, and they worked the first month. They didn't even ask. Jackie gave them a check, and they go, dude, I didn't even know we were going to get a check. <laughs> Jackie's like, well, of course you're going to get a check, and they're like, no, I didn't even really care. I just wanted to be here. I wanted to help That's people. Amazing. Yeah, it, I swear, every one of their stories. Yeah. So, um, guys, so entrepreneurship, right? Study, leaders are readers, right? You're yeah. a hell of a reader. Um, you know, study people that are, you know, alive still, kicking ass, and study people from 100 years ago. Yeah. Um, study everyone, right? Yeah. The, the world's your library. library. If you know what you're looking for, it'll give you what you're looking for, yeah. right? If you want to be great, study the greats. And then right now, I think everybody's asleep, so I think why well, everybody's asleep um, it could be your time to really rise up and, you know, two years of hardcore studying, recreating yourself, mm-hmm. building a new identity, creating a new work ethic, taking good care of yourself. First thing mm-hmm. you started with was like eat good food, you know, don't do drugs, you know, you know, and, and if you're drinking Being alcohol focused. and all that shit, just self-correct. Just get rid of all the trash. If you want a great life, now's the time to pursue it. And uh, I think right now, I think the market will really pay 
Um, if you ever want to be a killer, right now's the time. I think it'll pay you more money than you've ever imagined in your life, but you got to be the best. In yeah. order to be the best, you got to self develop everybody. Mm -hmm. So, Russell, we appreciate you, yes. bro. Seriously, yeah, man. Thank awesome. you. Yeah. Appreciate you. Thank you. Guys, we love you. You'll see you in the next podcast. Make sure you go follow him on Instagram. And uh, he, as he's crushing click funnels, he's about to release some crazy shit. We'll see you guys Lots. in the future. And uh, let's kill it. Yes. Hey, guys, I just want to tell you, you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor. Share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video. Comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.